Hello programmers and welcome to your 55th chapter in your Java E tutorial series. This will be the first episode on the case studies. What we saw before in the previous episodes, we're just going to mash it up into these case studies and show what all you learned can amount to. So the Duke's bookstore example is a simple e-commerce application that illustrates some of the more advanced features of JSF technology in combination with context and dependency injection for Java EE, Enterprise Beans, and the Java Persistence API. Users can select books from an image map, view the bookstore catalog, and purchase books. Now, you're going to have to bear with me. This bookstore example is pretty complex, but I'll teach it in an easy to understand format. Okay, so first of all, to make things easy on you, let's go ahead and start your Glassfish server up already. Go ahead and right click and start that guy up. And once that's done, go ahead into your open project and go into your case studies in your examples. So case studies and go into Duke's bookstore. Once you open a project up, this will go, this guy will start loading. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff that I've already selected and let's take them one at a time. First of all, let's go into our project files and click on this palm.xml. This is our, essentially this is our, uh, the book Java Persistence API entity. The J uh, JPA entity has all the information of all the books, like the ID, the title, author's name, price, and so on. So this is just taking in that uh, entity from your, um, from your database. Next, there are the enterprise beans. So go ahead into your source packages and go all the way down to your EJB. Over here, you have two enterprise beans. You have the book request bean, which essentially, here, let's just uh, open this guy up. So you can see what's going on. So it says here that it's a stateful session bean for the bookstore example. Essentially what that means is here, all it does it is it creates books, gets books, and buys books and updates the inventory. It's really simple stuff that all e-commerce websites should have. Then there's a config bean, which essentially it's a singleton bean that initializes the books database for the bookstore example. What that means is it takes in that book request bean that you saw before and it creates all the data that will be shown in the in the page. Next, well, let's take a look at our facelift pages. So let's go ahead and uh, minimize that web pages. And the first guy we want to take a look at is our index.xhtml. Over here, this is the first thing that you're going to see. So you will see a bunch of images of books and you can go ahead and click in that and click on them and they'll go to different kinds of links. Um, so let's see, uh, anything else that I want to show you? Yeah, so this is essentially just to use stylize your website. Things like a shopping cart, catalog, and checkout pages. That's what all the other stuff is for. And there are manage beans. So if we go ahead and minimize this guy, go into our managed beans over here, you can see that there's a managed bean for every single web page that you saw before. These are just the, just the business logic that's behind the web pages, just the backbone of what's going on and stuff. Now, I want to stress that I'm just speeding through this to in for the sake of time, but I really want you to go through almost every single one and use your knowledge that you gained from my previous tutorials to figure out what's going on. Okay, so now let's take a look into our custom components and other custom objects used in this Duke's bookstore. Let's go ahead and minimize this. And let's take a look into our let's see, components. And over here, you can see that there's components called area component and map component. So if you go into those, um, it just like has the stuff like, for example, what's inside our area, like um, just property keys and stuff that um, that's necessary for um, like getting the shape and the coordinates of where a mouse is and stuff. And the map component essentially does the same thing um, except for other stuff like, for example, the map. Okay, uh, next let's take a look into our listeners. So the listeners over here, there's a few and you can see just by the name, you can understand what's going on. Like for example, link book, uh, book change listener, like changing the link, uh, changing the book that you want, changing the name and the quantity changed. Then there is the model, which should be inside here. And this is just combining your components that you saw up there, just combining them both into one thing. Then there's the renderers. So renderers are just 
essentially just rendering what you got. Like it's whatever we coded before, we're just outputting it out, seeing what it looks like and decoding and encoding it um, to ensure that, you know, it works out. All right, so next let's take a look into our properties files. This is super important, especially if you have websites um, that's like published around the world. Go into your messages and you'll see the messages.properties which is first, everything over here is in English. You realize that that's your default message properties. The next one over here, that's in, that's next in line will be like the, the guy in German. So everything inside here can be converted into German, Spanish and French. Okay, so let's close that. And let's take a look into our final thing that I want to show you our deployment descriptors. So if we go ahead and close this guy, we can see inside our web pages, web INF. The first thing that you'll see is your web.xml. This is the one that you're really familiar with, the one that you 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 understand the most. Just a lot of stuff that we learned from in the previous tutorials, like session timeouts and URL mapping, servlet mapping, and a welcome file list. So you already know that. Um, I you already saw the palm.xml, so that's all cool. Um, then there's the bookstore.tag.xml. This one is just um, configuring your demo map to your demo area. So ensuring that these two are overlapping and they're the same kind of guy. Uh, let's see, is there anything else? Faces config.xml. This is just for your facelets pages, just to ensure that for your, like your locale and stuff. And let's see, a little description, um, ensuring that all these are eager so they actually load up when the application has started. And the final thing I want to show you, I guess, is the persistence.xml. So let's take a look if it's over here. It should be inside here, persistence.xml. So if we go into source, you'll see that this is where our persistence, um, like our data is stored. And this is going to be used for our books. Okay, so now that you got that, um, let's go into running the Duke Stores books uh, case study example. So make sure that your glasses is started already. Um, let's go ahead and minimize these so you don't have to worry about those. Um, and then make sure that you right click this guy and click build. And that will go ahead and build it over here. And as you can see, our build is successful. So let's go ahead and right click it and click run to go ahead and see it in our website. So as you can see, this is our index.xhtml. This is the first thing that you see, and you'll see that it's super like it's there's a lot of graphics over here that you can go ahead, hover over and see if there's any stuff that is really interesting. Um, these are the images and pictures that we saw in our book catalog. And over here, these are just the links. So you can click on any of them. Let's say let's take a look at the one that's featured. Go ahead and click that. And um, it tells you what you're reading, what you selected. So let's go ahead and add the selected book to cart. And you can go ahead and add any more stuff that you would like to see. So uh, let's say we want to add growing up on seven uh, web servers for fun and profit. And um, when we're done, let's go into our buy books. So go ahead and put in your name, let's say Viprov and our credit card number. So you have to put 16 numbers or else it's going to give you an error. And let's click. Uh, I want I don't know. I want the cheapest shipping and I want to get into Duke's diet and exercise journal. So go ahead and submit the submission. And it shows here that since your um, stuff is over $100, you can go ahead and join the Duke fan club for free. So go ahead and submit that information, submit it again. And it says that your order will be shipped on February 24th, which is like really uh, like far away, like a week later. And it says subscribed, you subscribe to this, and thank you for joining the Duke fan. You can go ahead and continue shopping and buy some more stuff. Go go around, go ahead, play around with this. Um, and this is literally it. This is the entire bookstore. And that should be it. That's all there is about this example. And in the next tutorial, we'll be taking a look at another case study on Duke's tutoring case study example, which will be like a tracking system for tutoring uh, for tutoring centers for students. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.